Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's new. At the end of the day. Wow. wow. <laughs> what happened there? Wow. At the end of the day, these costumes are unique. Uh, I think, again, it bargain bin all the CW ones, and it was interesting. <laughs> no, okay, let's not oh, go that yeah, crazy. They are, they are, they're all bargain bin. Uh, no, no, they, they're made, they're made on a typical TV show budget. budget. Yeah, 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 and and it has to, they, the actors and performers have to be able to move. Yeah. They don't have the luxury of having a movie costume where they're like, oh, put on the action suit, yeah. put on the drama suit, put yeah. on the whatever suit. Yeah. Because actually, I actually read that apparently the majority of a yearly budget goes towards these costumes. Like the Flash mm-hmm. costume, I think it's something like a hundred and something thousand dollars per costume, and they have like a number of them, right? So, oh. well, they I watched the uh, after uh, behind the scenes stuff of just Bucky's arm. He has like three or four arms that he has to mm-hmm. wear. One is just the perfect looking arm that it just is there and it doesn't move. It just looks awesome. And there's one that's synthetic that kind of bends. And there's another one that ha- like full that has the hands that are free. Yeah, probably so bends a specific just, way. There's yeah, one like, for holding drinks. Yeah, there's, there's one, one for has, scratching his head. One that has the full <laughs> fingers. One that doesn't have fingers. There's one for leaning. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, and then and then on top of that, they still superimpose CGI on all of it. So it's like, yeah, it's that's still, it's that's, that's what I'm saying. They're gonna there's gonna be some doctoring of these costumes to make them look even better when they hit the silver yeah. screen. Yeah, but My if that exists awesome. anymore. Falcon and Winter Soldier stuff look perfect. So uh, uh, if you do not uh, think that John's views are correct, please. No, I think they look great. But some people did criticize that. Oh, they don't look like they don't look like the movie costume. I'm like, well, you got to add the lighting, and and they and they definitely doctored those up with a little bit of a CG and things like that. Listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they'll make some adjustments. Every movie that they they make, they always make slight adjustments of the costumes. New costume designer comes in. They have black. Did you see Black Widow's new, I'm sure the the Falcon, new poster? Like how many costumes does she have every movie? Yeah, but, it's crazy. but Rob, let's not let's not think that's because of altruist. Like they're not doing it because of the goodness of the heart. They're doing it because of toys. They're making a right. new costume yes. to sell something. <laughs> so it's not like, right. oh man, we're improving the costume. No, 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 no. We're making a new costume because there's a new toy that comes out and we need to sell that. So that's- although the only improvement would have been the Batman, the Christopher Nolan Batman begins, he couldn't move his head. And Christian Bale's like, I need to move my neck. I can't be standing here looking side to side. And that's when they made. The, the headpiece spe- yeah. uh, separate for the Dark Knight. Um, and that was, yeah. Because Batman in the comic book doesn't need to turn his head properly because he's Batman. He can, he, he, he's so smart. <laughs> he can just turn his body left to right and he fights everyone that way. So <laughs> that's how it works. So anyways, welcome everyone to the Heroes World hey. 14 podcast. <laughs> uh, I am your host, Stupe. With me as always is and are the owners and proprietors of the Heroes World store in Markham, Ontario. That would be Andre and John. Please say hello to the people of the world. Howdy, folks. People of the world. Yeah, and here we go. People all over the world. (laughs) Oh, boy. And that was the end of the episode. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. Join (laughs) hands. On a love train. Um, (laughs) And, of course, finally, last but not least, the prince of mischief himself uh mr rob Godet. hello hello everybody thanks uh thank you for joining us again on on this uh review slash random mixed bag of things so yeah, uh, on your long weekend thank you uh, yes thank you so uh we are going to talk spoiler filled the first two episodes of modok and then we're going to go into some uh bargain bin questions that we're going to go through that uh, as i teased mm-hmm. from last week what andre brought to the table and then i i uh move forward and added uh, my own thought uh, question. And then uh, if we have time, we'll go into Rob stuff. So there we go. So that's what we have time for today. I don't know if I have anything. <laughs> you did. You did. Oh, all right. Uh, we're t- uh, we're the, talking about there can only be one. There, oh. there's, here we are, born to be kings. We're the, oh, yes. We're all the right. princes of the universe is uh, the quote of all quotes. Right. And if you know that, you know what Rob's topic is. Uh, well, now you've teased us. So you pretty much have to now discuss it later. <laughs> <laughs> one sentence response <laughs> cool. it, it depends it depends on how long he takes to build his pc because uh cavill you know really cares about his pc making so uh, good for we'll him see how much we go all right so uh marvel i don't think this was in full synergy with the all rest mm. of the marvel stuff when they came with this tv show for hulu but here we go there's a new tv show that uh, has all dropped as rob told me everywhere but canada and the uk all at once we are getting right. it once a week, uh, but the rest of the world got a big mega dump of Marvel's Modoc, uh, which is a TV show starring Pat Oswald, 
playing one of my favorite characters, Modoc, which is truly ridiculous <laughs> and stupid. Come on, that's a stretch. Uh, no, I, I completely, you can ask my wife. She, there's a friend who owns a mug and I'm like, I want that mug, the Modoc mug. And then my friend's wife is like, please take it. And my friend's like, I can't, I, I, love, I love this mug. And I'm like, I would never take away the Modoc mug. I love Modoc too much, but I know how much he means to you and I. Uh, you, I can never take your Modoc mug. So um, yeah, this, this, uh, follows the life of Modoc, who has had different acronyms, but uh, I think there was mental, there was mobile, there was mechanized. Uh, was there any one of the three as the M's or organism designed only for killing is the, the acronym that uh, at least the internet tells me. And it follows Modoc uh, in a kind of a bizarro world, clearly not in the Marvel 616 world where he just kind of deals with things. He has a family. He has two children, uh, Lou and Melissa, and a wife. And he currently runs AIM as the Scientist Supreme. So these are things that, uh, if you didn't know, was a thing. So, well, I think uh, you should explain what Modoc, what he looks like for those who haven't seen the show and they're watching this. Modoc is a giant head that sits in a small chair with little legs and arms that dangle out of it. He was a brilliant person who uh, <laughs> did science experiments on himself, who made himself bigger unlike the leader who just has a big brain and doesn't need to sit on a hovering chair. Mm -hmm. uh, Modoc uh, did too much work and now he has to sit in that little floaty chair with his little legs dangling off of it. So uh, that is the difference. I guess you could say he's a, a blend between the leader and Professor X in a chair, I guess, whatever you want to say. So he, he leads the AIM, which is uh, Advanced Idea Mechanics. They are uh, an organization that pretends to be good for humanity, but meanwhile, they're a bunch of super human villains and bad guys in yellow jumpsuits <laughs> that go around trying to take over the world. So that is that. They were done dirty in uh, Iron Man 2. Uh, as you remember, they talked about AIM, and then they just washed them aside. So uh, there we go. That's, that, that's, that's your quick thing. So, John... I sent out, uh, we watched all of us the first two episodes. So give us your thoughts uh, as only John can do and uh, any additional questions you have out there. So let us know. And this is full spoilers. We're going full details. So if you haven't watched MODOK, you've been forewarned. Go. I, th I think we should talk about episode one and then go into episode two because some people in sure. Canada can't watch episode two yet. Um, so based off of episode one, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I was okay with it. I was, I was, uh, I was fully expect going in expecting to really, really love this. I think episode one, for some reason, doesn't quite hit. Um, I don't know if it feels like um, they're, they're, they're restricted in a, in a certain way, like Robot Chicken definitely goes over the top. So I was expecting something along those lines just because the visuals of it. Um, and then I, I don't think it really kicks off into episode two. So I don't know if everyone just wants to talk. We want to just talk about episode go, one and then jump go, to two. Just go to one and two. It's, it's like the Bad Batch. I just incorporate it all in one hour movie. So... Okay, like so after people, a, that's like after a night of drinking, John. You can you're gonna end up doing a number one and number two. So just go for it. <laughs> you open the that, nice how, fancy bottle of wine, John, and then you open the cheap stuff afterwards. So just keep on going. <laughs> that's how Rob rolls. Um, but yeah, yeah. So second 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 episode definitely has more of uh, a, a better feeling. I feel like the jokes weren't as kind of uh, I don't know, like uh, I don't know what the term is, like try hard. Like I feel like the episode one was really trying hard to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you and try and make you laugh and try to explain a lot of these jokes and stuff like that. Episode two has a bit more of a plot going on. Um, so I like that. And, and it's got that wicked uh, third eye blind song. So that's, that's definitely the best part two of the episode. Third for eye me. blind songs. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, but, but yeah, overall, I, I think it's a, it's a good show to um, that you can put on in the background and watch. And then if you do want to sit there and, and watch it, there's a lot of little juicy tidbits for you to, to, to eat up. But yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob. <laughs> All right. So let me just say this: is that um, because of our massive clout and stature online uh, and the base uh, falling that we have, we've been given access to two episodes. <laughs> Um, but I will say that those in Canada who are going to watch this, I would I I would really encourage you to stick with it for next week because to kind of dovetail a bit what John was saying, episode one is a bit of a, it's not a struggle, but what you saw in the trailers leading up to it is not reflective as much in episode one. The, the jokes aren't there. Now, John said robot chicken. So these are the same. Again, if you don't know what we're talking about, 
this is the same production company that did Robot Chicken, uh, Seth Green's, uh, and they've been doing it for like 15 years now. So they've kind of perfected uh, the visual style of animation uh, and their jokes. But episode one is, uh, it builds on what the, I, I'm assuming the rest of the series is going to be. I mean, the events of episode one, you know, tie directly into episode two, but it's, it doesn't have that humor. And admittedly, I was watching it going, I don't understand. Like it's, it was cute. There was a couple moments, but I was like, I don't see where the humor is that we were kind of promised. And I, I see what John is saying is that yeah, it wasn't it quite like firing. Were, You're like, this has got the recipe. It's got these weird it, dad it's, jokes. It's got world building. Marvel and characters. Yeah. Two, they and, just go for it. yeah. Yeah. And so you kind of expected that episode that you'd be like pissing your pants laughing at episode one and, and do not be surprised or alarmed that you don't do that. You might go huh, a few times, but you're not going to be busting guts. That being said, you will be rewarded by episode two. I'm, I threw it on, uh, I was watching it and I just, uh, it makes me laugh even thinking about it. I was messaging Stu and I was like, holy crap, this shit's so funny. Um, within like the first seven seconds, I was like, I, I'm in, I'm sold, take my money, give it to me all. Disney, why are you screwing us over with weekly release? Because I want to watch this. It is exceptionally funny. Patton, the, the voice acting in this is, is phenomenal. I mean, Patton Oswalt, his his voice in and of itself is unique and you can, you know, everybody, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've likely seen his four minute diatribe on parks and rec where it was all free form. Like he ad libbed that entire filibuster scene. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just do Patton Oswalt filibuster. Um, so his voice makes this show his delivery of these lines make the show there is heart in the show uh it is it is funny as john said there are some dad joke type things going on uh off camera or before we recorded uh Stu said this is this was written by people like our age uh and as much as i'd like to tell everybody that we're all in our 30s a little bit higher um so we um <laughs> some of us may be higher than others although andre you and i are pretty pretty close so um, this, it, again, if you grew up in the, in the nineties, you know, this, you know, the, the pop cultural references, when they go back in episode two, they do go back in time. It makes sense. You're laughing out loud. It's, you'll be surprised upon reflection that Disney allowed a lot of these jokes to go through because there's a lot of jokes about, about this and there's some cussing and swearing and you'd be like, Whoa, I'm kind of surprised, but I'm glad that they just gave them carte blanche to go and do and make what you want to make because, you know, that's the tone you're going for. So episode one might be a bit of a, a head scratcher. You are rewarded with episode two, and I cannot wait to to continue this journey. And as we were talking about it before the podcast started and Andre wasn't here, he's getting ready. Uh, mm. The young Modoc wearing the visor flipped upside down wearing the puka shell necklace is like right, so the George brand of the 90s. <laughs> that's a Rob look. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah it was, Rob it, you're like, oh my God, this is in sync. It's, you yeah, know, yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is a frosted tip. Like Andre probably saw a thousand of those guys walk into a store to buy comics. He's like, ah, yes, this, this look is very essential for the 1990s <laughs> or with a Hawaiian shirt or Hawaiian shorts with, yes. with like, like, uh, which I still have those sandals. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like he's wearing like sandals and everything i'm like oh this yeah. is so perfect uh for this time period uh and it is it is really funny um and if you're gonna watch any animated show this summer don't watch the bad batch watch this one <laughs> uh no uh, no shots I, I, fired. I shots to, fired. to your point rob uh we talked about this too like the bad batch really rewards you for being a star wars truther so if you right. watch all the other stuff like Bad Batch is unsurmountable because there's so much history that goes with it and you're rewarded. Uh, Modoc is a show where there are Easter eggs. You don't need to know about the, the history, but you know that scene where he's going through that bin, he's like ultimate nullifier and throws it away and grabs the next thing. It's like all the little marks. I think it helps. I think it helps. If you there. don't know that stuff, some of these jokes are not gonna it, it's it's in there. Like know. if you if you know your Marvel stuff, you're dying of laughter. Like there's a couple of things in the future where if you keep an eye on the TV in Modoc's house. There are clips of like superheroes doing stuff and like little small Easter eggs and stuff like that happens. So you just have to keep an eye out. But I, you know, a full disclosure before we get to Andre, I watched all 10 episodes, so I'm done. I watched it all in one sitting and- uh, 10? Yeah, 10 episodes. I went through and episode three really, I think the show builds up to wackiness and when you go to episode three like they really go off the rails and either you're in or out after episode three like they're like this is the where we're gonna be and if you're cool 
welcome aboard. If you're out, like, it's kind of a very, as I joked about with Rob, it's like an Amazon model. It's like, let's just release three episodes and let's see if you're kind of in. Marvel did that with WandaVision 2. They released the first three episodes to get people kind of used to it and then go uh, go off. So, um, yeah, it, it is it is different. Andre, I, I'm, I'm bracing for impact for your thoughts. Go for it. Well, it's no surprise. You know, I, I have, I have uh, little, um, I don't like the style of robot chicken and, mm. and that type of comedy and stuff, but you did, I think nailed, nail it on the head when you said it was a mega dump, because this is probably one of the shittiest pieces of television I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> it, you know, if the first episode is supposed to, this is a comedy, not once did I laugh. And I challenge any of you guys just on that first episode to recap a funny joke. This to me was those guys who created it stood in a room and jerked themselves off because they think they're funny. Absolute waste of time, waste that of in energy, could be a funny waste of Marvel <laughs> characters, just waste of everything. And I will tell you that for me, your introduction has to hook me. First episode, first issue, first chapter, mm -hmm. first anything. I watched that. I didn't bother watching episode two because what they stuck to do, they did not do. And I'm glad for people, if you want to go out and watch 10 episodes of this, but if you do not know the Marvel universe or you do not know this stuff or you're not into like... I don't want to say bad comedy because it's just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. But if you are not into this type of comedy, there is absolutely zero motivation for you after watching the first episode to watch the second. Like, I have no idea what they were going to. I don't even know what the pitch would have been for this show. And I, I really think that it doesn't fit into anything that they're doing in the Marvel whole thing. Like I, this seems so far out of the MCU with all their cartoons yeah. and other things and the TV. MCU, yeah. And yeah, yeah. You can totally see that. And I don't, and I don't know if it's going to hurt the brand. I would almost rather it have been like MODOK and Deadpool because then at least it would have been kind of this crazy humor, but this stuff with MODOK, him being a family man, having one normal son and one other son, him having a normal wife and all this Honestly, I I just I just don't get it. I I legit think it is stupid for stupid sake and to me that is an absolute waste. It's not creative, it's not inspiring. There's there's literally nothing unique and original about it. So I don't know what its point was. After watching 10 episodes, there's a point but I won't go into details. Uh, <laughs> I, I think there's a problem some... because it's Modoc. He's such a silly character. You're like, yeah. okay, it's 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 like he's he's really out there. What if this was like a parody? What if that was a Doctor Doom, and it was like a parody of of of, of a villain or something like that? And he's trying to run his no. Regular, I, I, uh, think, I think I think offices or something like that. Well, here's the thing. I think that Andre would be even more incensed if you waste Doctor Doom because it's Modoc. It's not the worst thing that can happen. Because let's be frank. Modok probably will never show up in the MCU because he's just too strange and it's really hard to get CGI done. Like, I just don't foresee him being used in any of the, the movies. So if you're going to just throw away a character on this type of TV show, Modok's the right one. Like, it's not Doctor Doom, you know, even though it's not Mr. Sinister, it's not the leader. Like, even though they all show up in the show, spoiler alert, and there's lots of supervillains that show up, they're, they're not going to use them. They're not, they're, they're going to use them over Modok. Modok is not going to probably be used. It, it, he is a unique character to your your point. Um, they probably just test it out to see whether something this zany yeah, can but, work. But Stu, but, is Modoc ever used this ridiculously in the comics? Of course like, not. In, but this is this is a TV but show it doesn't have cool. to be. It doesn't. I'm have not to saying be it has to be like the comics. The source but it's material. literally, it's it's like just. I don't know. I don't even but, know. But, Any, but Andre, anyways. this is this is what. Okay, but yeah, this is what the show people does, like, right? People like. like like, like, I think to the point, Andre, you've said it. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It is not what it's done. But if you look at the history of Batman, Batman's changed so many times because media changed him. Because he wasn't the Dark Knight <clears throat> until Burton did it. All of a sudden, he becomes, he was a goofy character that was all right around pow and zap and zoink and fighting a shark with shark repellent. So characters can change through media and evolve. It's just a matter of, do we feel that MODOK is even a character that they even want to bother with? I just don't know whether they'll see him in, in a real life capacity. I think they just enjoy 
having a listen there are cartoons yeah sorry Rob, go ahead. there are a myriad of examples of genres of movies that are are made to make fun of said genre so you can go see people love police procedurals back in the 70s and then they gave you police squad which then was born into the naked gun movies you could go with a disaster uh, movies again from the 70s the late 70s uh, like Fahrenheit 451 the towering inferno uh, and then you get into um, airplane the airplane movies right so there are these examples where people say oh I really like this stuff but then you have these zany crazy comedies they can coexist it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't destroy the source material it, it's just it's the same as how Robot Chicken did, uh, and, and so did Family Guy. They did, you know, the Blue Harvest uh, for the Star oh, Wars yeah. stuff. I mean, they're, yeah, there are parodies of these of these existing properties uh, with their own little spin to make it fun. Why not? I mean, the humor obviously doesn't hit for Andre, which is fine. I'm more of a, you know, a fart and, and, and dick joke kind of guy. It makes <laughs> me laugh all the time. Um, some people don't. They're like, that's disgusting humor fine that's fine it's whatever I, I like a good fart joke so um just <laughs> saying the word fart makes me laugh so but andre probably um, could have told by the the trailer that he's yeah. like this is not for he, me he so he's just yeah. watching it but, to humor but us but i think yeah. we know unlike for example star trek where marvel and dc is already set like these are else world these are there's different universes so you can enjoy them separately the you have the comic books doesn't matter about the mcu because they're different they're different universes you know the ultimate universe they set up this thing but when you do a a movie like Star Trek and then you destroy the universe and they don't have a history of having multiple universes that's when fans get mad it's like wiping away stuff or like Star Wars Star Wars to the egregiousness of many people basically wiped away all this old stuff and it's like we don't even count it anymore it's it's legacy it's like it rather just say it's a different universe and Luke went through and these are two like people would be more comfortable and that's why Mod Modoc can get away with it because frankly it's not your cup of tea this is universe like eight seven three like who cares let let it kind of be wacky on its own but i think andre did you stay to the very end credits of course not what they did when, when that seen... when that when that okay, well, let, me, let, me, let, me, let you, me go let me when you said uh, it let me was just go as and short you... as bad back so, okay I, i'm muting you so if you <laughs> because andre I, I, as a as a store owner i thought maybe you would appreciate the end of it if you watch to the end credits, they did something that I've never seen in any other comic book TV show. They showed the MODOK comic and said, MODOK the comic, if you're interested, is available for sale at your local store or online digital. It showed the comic book of MODOK and said, hey, if you like this, if, even if you're interested, we have a comic book. It's the first time I've seen any property, comic or anyone say, link it back. And that was your biggest gripe of all the stuff. They never linked back to comics. So the one thing they do in every episode at the end credits is like Modoc, com they have the picture of that Modoc comic, that w and then they say available for retail. If it go to your local store, pick up a comic, which is huge because frankly Marvel's never done that, and or anyone DC any of the any of the Flash does it say go buy a Flash comic? Nope. But even if someone says yeah, I kind of want to buy a Modoc comic, maybe it's completely different. It's something that was brand new and at the end of the day if it drives a couple of buy Modoc comics then success because not any of the Marvel movies at the end says buy a comic or inspired by comics it just said inspired by creators so this was the one time yeah it's, where... it's the Modoc the Modoc head games they're actually advertising the graphic novel that is done by the showrunners Patton Oswalt and Jordan Bloom or whatever so, so that, that, that's, that's the you props like for that show there's a comic book that's directly in sync which is your biggest gripe because when these guardians came out you said well they want that guardians i can't give them that guardians well modok if you like this modok there's the exact comic book written by the same two dudes there you go so yes i agree andre it's not your cup of tea but for once the synergy is there so as a retailer you gotta say it's a step it's a step <laughs> it's a step imagine it's, if they do that at the end of falcon and winter soldier and yeah, uh it's and better WandaVision. than nothing because none of the other walking dead doesn't say at the end buy a walking dead comic None of the other shows that you love say even Star Wars doesn't say buy even Star Invincible. Wars. I don't think the Invincible show did that. Doesn't, did say, doesn't even recognize the fact that there was a comic, and this is the first I can think of that TV show that you may not love, Andre, may not like, but in the, the day it it for once links it to a comic that you can buy and you can read on your own. So, they should put it at the beginning. So though. can I just can I just <laughs> but but Stu, just a point of clarification. Uh, um, 
that's not on Disney, the star Canada. I just went through the end of episode one and it's not there. Well, on the ones that I saw, uh, the, the, it was there. so maybe through the US the stuff they do uh, on, the, on the Hulu, on the Hulu uh, broadcast, it's it's there. So it's there. I guess they oh, remove it for the Disney star, which is yeah, on Disney Plus. It just the screen just went small and then yeah. it said, if you like this, watch something else. So yeah, I solar didn't, opposites. I didn't see anything on, but on, on yeah. the, uh, there, there are versions that do say it. So as far as I'm concerned, it's better than nothing because it's no i agree i'm just surprised that they wouldn't have put that but whatever well, what I do i know disney plus has different things they can't get around or they're not allowed to do so um uh so rob uh yeah. our, i andre only watched one so i'm not going to that question john are you gonna watch you've watched three episodes are you gonna continue to watch it or are you are you out um i i will i will watch it like i said before i'll watch it in the background i'm not gonna devote my entire attention just because it's not it, it's you know it's, it's not it doesn't hit for me as much as it does for you guys like the best part about episode two was that third eye blind song <laughs> i was like yo i gotta put this on my playlist right now oh god <laughs> maybe maybe if they threw in some more jokes of of you know the opposite movie like the r&b genre r&b scene then i'd be like oh, okay i get that you know they went yeah. to see tlc and they missed the tlc concert saw you know Mariah whoever concert, else before yeah. you know new edition or something like that yeah i'd be i'd be more into it but yeah <laughs> uh rob is gonna watch more oh yeah this is my this is a show for me that i will put on uh, on a weeknight after i take the dog for a walk the kids have gone to bed my wife has been sleeping at this point for two hours um, yeah, your wife will be <laughs> look at it and be like what the f is this rob are you a grown-ass <laughs> man watching no she'll this? know she knows no, no no she listen we've been there for so long she knows um no so this is i actually i'm looking forward to watching are you gonna episodes. look at your phone at all during watching this no nope. no i never did really? during oh, no, no. okay so the only way i stopped okay. to message Stu yesterday because i was killing myself laughing um i mean and i don't want to give any jokes away on episode two so but i, I it, um yeah so i'm actually looking forward to this this is like in the evening sometimes like that 45 minute period before you know once everybody's gone to sleep and the doors and before i crash i like to have something to kind of watch this will be my show for for that one evening i can't wait i i have to talk about shout out to as you mentioned before Patton oswald's incredible as modok but john ham even his limited as Iron Man, every time he's just talking, I'm just like, oh, bravo. Iron Man like, replacement. So good. Like, he's just, he just epitomizes the Tony Stark that, in my mind, who's not Robert, da just the smugness of, like, Tony would, Stark. Would, like, would Andre be okay if Robert Downey Jr. gets replaced with John Hamm? John Hamm's too old, but uh, I, I I think we all would love Whatever. John Hamm. John Hamm is perfect. Him. John Hamm's perfect. So it doesn't matter. John Hamm would be incredible, but they probably want someone younger anyways to be, to be more movies, but John Hamm's incredible. Um, there is a really fun Modoc kind of copying uh, a Don Draper esque thing coming up soon in an episode, which is also awesome and hilarious. He does his own <laughs> carousel wheel pitch, <laughs> and incredible. So, like again, if you if you know shows and whatnot, like he does it. Um, another like Nathan Fillion is in an undisclosed role, uh, mm -hmm. but he is uh, good golly, like he the rumors of him being a certain superhero if you want to go online and read it before in this james gunn universe i think we saw it though didn't we see it uh isn't he it's in one of the trailers okay if it is already in the trailer he yeah it is wonder man, wonder man. And he's perfect he is yeah. so good as wonder man i'm like i just want him to be i want him to just be <laughs> live simon. action wonder man simon williams i just want him to be simon williams and just be in it he is he is great uh like all the voice actors like Bill Hader does like a voice here and there. Uh, yeah. Alan Tudyk does one. Mm -hmm. uh, like everyone that you know is really good. And then uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, who's also great, has like three words in this own episode, but it's fantastic too. So nonetheless, uh, the voice acting's uh, great. And uh, a special Whoopi Goldberg episode comes up too. And she's freaking, it's Whoopi Goldberg. So uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed all the, the nuances and stuff. They, they, there a lot of the stuff I read. It was like, oh, it's it's very um, uh, Venture Brothers like, and I disagree in terms of the comedy in the show. Like Venture Brothers is a very nuanced, very dark TV show. It is very dark. Like it, it's not to your Andre's point, very funny. Ha ha. There's, you know, they spoiler alert going forward. They do talk about depression and, and divorce and children dealing with the like what it means to be a, a parent, like a child being with two divorced parents, <clears throat> like. It goes through a lot of those weird chains, but um, it's not a show where it's like 30 Rock where I watch three times in a row and I get a new joke every single time because they pack everything in. It's 
you know, it's a one time watch. And if you get the Easter eggs, you can stop it and you can go through it. I think the Venture Brothers does a better job at doing way better callbacks and way better nuance of like characters, the way that they kind of bend characters to what they need them to be rather than and shock and awe rather than mm-hmm. this, which is just this is like to Andre point, it's just shock of like, oh, these characters and them saying wacky do things is not the same level as like a nuanced change of a character. So is it, is it, do you know if it's CG made to look like stop motion? It, it's or is stop, it stop motion, motion and they CG the mouth because the mouth okay. you see in early robot chickens, I believe it's funny because back when the first robot chicken stuff came out, uh, it was way of the way of the fat one, I think, which was the first skit where it was like, Joey Fatone's family of uh, NSYNC gets killed and he has to go to like a Kung Fu tournament. I was at Heroes World and I'm like, guys, you got to see this. And I remember showing it to you, John, and you're just like, this is so <laughs> stupid and so funny at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I was, we were, and then all of us, there was like seven people watching this robot chicken before it was robot chicken. Uh, where the fat boy, where the fat man, or like this, this claymation where they got action figures. I feel like that was even before YouTube days. It was like on Flash or something. Yeah, like it was. It was like on that. another site. I think we watched it at the Hero at Heroes World at your old store. Like, yeah, yeah. I was, I was kind of wishing they used real toys in this in this show, so I could at least be like, hey, yo, I own those toys or whatever. Modok toys. Well, maybe it's they. It was interesting. Yeah. They, Honestly, there, there is a brand new Modok yeah. figure. Yeah, so we will have that very soon. Honestly, if it brings back that Modok mug, and there are people that have that porcelain Modok mug, <laughs> yeah, like. Sure. If it brings that back, that's it. all I want. Like, I missed my chance. I bought the Thor hammer mug, but not the Modoc one. I forever cursed my name going, why did I not buy Modoc? This is, this is, this is really... Mo- uh, Modoc is available in the new Marvel Crisis Protocol game. Very, very strong character. Yeah, um, so, if like you, so if you want to yeah. play as Modoc, uh, pick up Marvel Crisis Protocol and definitely recruit him for your team. He'll, he'll kick yeah. some ass. I, I think at the end of the day, Andre's point is very correct. Modoc, this character is nothing near the the wackiness and the strength and intelligence of the Modoc in the comics, because this one, they make him like, he doesn't invent or do it. Like he's, he, he invents, but like a lot of the whole thing is that because he has a family and kids, he he's unbalanced in terms of prioritizing. So he, he gives up stuff to do other things, which is basically the whole key of the show. It's like, you have a family, how do you balance, you know, running a business, you know, how do you balance doing work and then also raising two children? And in the Modoc comics, he doesn't have any of that stuff, so he can just focus on being scientist supreme. But in this one, that's the biggest issue with him. And as you move forward and show you th- the balances, which leads to the shock ending. So there is stuff coming up uh, if you if you uh, finish it out that that really delves into to it. And uh, yeah, anyways, so I I as I watched all 10 episodes, enjoyed it for what it was. Uh, I got it all locked in now so I can, I can reference it and talk about it. So as necessary, but uh, yeah, it, it, like I said before, wait till three. And if you're in, you're in, if you're out, then get off this train because it's only going to get weirder. So that's what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> I think you uh, can determine by the trailer. If you, if you're going to be into this, I, I, I think to Rob's point, the trailer is like many trailers misleading. Like it's not, it's not, you know, what you think it is by the trailer. Mm-hmm. And episode two is already different than what the trailer is. Episode one is, and episode three definitely is off because they go into some weird risque care like categories. I'm just like, oh, I didn't expect them to do this. And <laughs> even there's a lot of like simulated sex that happens, and I'm just like, I did not expect this at all. So this is oh, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> like, it's, it's gonna it's gonna be interesting because it's on the banner. Like when you yeah, open your Disney Plus, of, like, it's, yeah. it's Whoa, on the top weird. banner, right? Yeah, 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 it's not for kids. It's a TVMA, no, I think. So. No, no, it, it's really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy yeah it's really like okay so uh that's that's all at the end of the day yeah i watched 10 i if if, if you want something light and ridiculous to watch the background yeah i would say just watch Modoc. uh we know what andre's thoughts are we don't need him to go any further uh that that is it he'll yeah, yeah. like basically andre's saying if you don't like stuff like robot chicken and things like yeah. that this is not going to change your yeah. mind it's not it's not lighter than robot chicken if you don't like that brand of humor you i don't yeah. think you're going to dig this uh, and, and and we have two weeks to wait for uh loki anyway so loki's coming out on a wednesday what in like two weeks so uh is it june june 9th, june 9th. so we'll have we'll be talking about that relatively soon uh, John and I were laughing because John was like, why is it on a Wednesday? And I'm like, hey, if I was, if we were all four in America right now, we're not watching anything on the weekend. So even though it's a Friday, like we're going out. So uh, if you are, it's, it's really smart for Marvel to do it on a Wednesday so that you have all day Thursday to be talked about. And people are talking about 
the time variance and Loki doing stuff. And then Friday people talk about it. And then the weekend comes and no one talks about anything else. Yeah. Shut up. Shut off your social media through the yeah. week. If you you're you're, out, you're out in the streets or at a baseball <laughs> game or like on a beach. So if you're America right now, you're not on the biggest market. Like you don't care. Like you're, you're not worried about the weekend. So it will be a challenge to us. We will, we'll figure out what we're going to do on what day, but uh, we don't you worry. We're going to talk about Loki. So there we go. Uh, we're jumping on to our next topic. This is the super topic that Andre mentioned before uh, that I liked a lot, but I didn't think last week we'd have enough time and justice to go over the topic. So here we go. I'm going to, uh, talk about something that Andre mentioned before, which is Marvel heroes reborn 2021, not to be confused with Marvel reborn 1996, uh, <laughs> in, in the 2001 comic of this, uh, issue two, uh, there's a serious way to combine villains such as Dr. Doom and the Juggernaut. So I've asked every, I've tasked everyone to uh, create a villain combining two and give me a cool name and possible origin. And as I mentioned before, extra points for creativity. So just don't go Magneto and Professor X and call it Onslaught <laughs> because it's already been done. <laughs> yeah, I got, I, it already happened, John. I, I called you out. You cannot do Professor X and Magneto call Son it Onslaught. It's already happened. Um, so, uh, John, uh, we'll let you nothing. go first. I got nothing. Yeah, so I, I was I was struggling with this, but I'm pretty sure Rob's got nothing. So I, I think mine will be not that bad. Um, but my my best idea I could come up with was taking um, Daredevil mainstay villain Kingpin and combining him with uh, X Men's Apocalypse. Um, mostly because I want Apocalypse in a fire ass suit, um, and he he would be called um, Apoca Pin. <laughs> <laughs> and and he would just be like hey um the whole survival of the fittest thing and he'd be like kind of like like kind of like 50 cent he's like i'm gonna dominate this corporate world instead and take the x-men down from a, a corporate ladder standpoint <laughs> and the x-men's got this brand new book called x corp or whatever so they have their lawyers fighting with um this business mogul known as uh, a pocket pin or whatever so i would, just wanted to get him in a white suit i thought that would use his power to uh, his his uh, you know his power to turn off the electricity and water of the x mansion like that's what he would do just to spite them or, he, yeah he, he or, tried to he tried to bankrupt <laughs> professor x and his x-men he, he's like survival of the fittest um and i even, i didn't even got to fight you anymore i'm gonna beat you guys in the corporate world so Intellectual. That, that was the best thing i could come this, up with this is very just, just for something new <laughs> this is very stringer bell so i appreciate john that you went to the the stringer bell uh side of things so uh apocalypse and kingpin wow all right uh <laughs> rob what do you have for us well i kind of cheated because i decided to use a villain from each of the marvel and dc universes is that not allowed you can do whatever you want totally not allowed you can do whatever you <laughs> all want, right but uh, I, you, well, you won't win because it points creativity but let's go wait what do you mean okay well i have to choose two from the marvel universe no, yeah. she's whoever you want. That's I'm from the Marvel missing. Universe. That's what we talk. <laughs> well, it was what... supposed to be from the Heroes Reborn, where where they uh, they had a character. It was Doctor Doom gets the Crimson uh, Gem of Sidorak, and he became Doctor Juggernaut. And Quicksilver uh -huh. died with Scarlet Witch, so she became the uh, the Silver Witch, combining her powers to cast spells. So it was supposed to be take two villains in in the Marvel Universe, mash them together. And see oh, what that's what the okay. Heroes Reborn comic was doing, and they've done a really good job uh, so okay. far. And so all I screwed the up. Heroes are kind of um, <laughs> well. Um, to be fair, we, you did well. ask questions in our thread about uh, questions uh, to. Clarify. All right, I screwed up, so I'm going to make one on the fly because right, I'm perfect. My, my You're one so was, smart. Bro. You want me to go first and buy yeah, you? Yeah, I got it. No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to take Galactus and Sabretooth, and I'm going to call them. <laughs> Galactooth. <laughs> you get out of here. You're copying my shit. That's so awful. Why? Why Galactus? What, what happened? That, because that my original idea was Mr. Uh, Sinister and Sinestro, and I was going to call them Mr. Sinestro. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> so I'm just trying I to... I want to use it, Mr. Sinister somehow, Why too. Why would you have Mr. Sinister and just someone else? Like, you couldn't Okay, find... fine. Mr. Sinister and Sabretooth. And it'd be called Mr. Sinitooth. Sinitooth. <laughs> 
do you own a dentist? Like, are you, are yeah. you like, what is going on? Are you becoming no. a dentist? Or like, um, the I, I want to be a uh, Herbie like, from the classic uh, Rankin Bass, uh, Rudolph Red Nose Ranger cartoon. I just, I just want to be a dentist. Um, no, <laughs> I, <laughs> no. Um, so, anyways, okay. Well, are you, I obviously are you trying screwed to be Brian up. Cranston, just so you could tell jokes of a certain ilk. So, no, you know? I obviously screwed up because I, I actually, I thought you know, Sinestro and Mister Sinister. But yeah, I'll, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna defer <laughs> what's, to what's Andre. What's the superhero origin <laughs> yeah, of origin? of Sinestro of Mister Sinestro? Yeah, Mr. Either, either one. Go, go, go for it. Yeah. It was, it was that. Uh, um, I'm just gonna defer to Andre. So. <laughs> just come up with something. I want to. No, wanna no. See. It was, it was essentially that Mr. Sin uh, that Sinestro multiplies himself, but then he has essentially he's he gets the the yellow ring, uh, and and there's like hundreds of Sinestros, uh, all but all Mr. Sinestros, but all different personalities. Um, so he clones himself. Correct. And okay, cool. He, uh, cool. Takes over the world. Okay. Uh, I, I, okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to think about how I can improve your, your thing. Uh, oh, wow. Apparently well, you and my Steve's wife going to doctor. She's going to script doctor <laughs> like, your, cause, your character. Cause like, I feel like, you know what? That's okay. John told said earlier this week that I was irrelevant. So sure. Why don't you just go ahead and improve on my own ideas? <laughs> John like, on our, like, could, on our, what I miss podcast said, uh, you're irrelevant. So sure. Please continue with his line of thinking and, and improve on my work. Uh, like I, I, I will think of something that can be a punny. Uh, I'm just trying to think of like a character name that matches with, that could fit with Sinister. Uh, it's just really, really hard right now because if you're just going for the bit where it has to be called Mr. Something Somethings, then it's like, you know, there aren't too many uh, like, like a combination of hero or villains that have a last name that kind of fit that because you just jammed in tooth at the end of it because it just seemed to make sense. <laughs> The other way would have worked better. Sa like, saber lactis. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> well, that just sounds though like Here's if you've thing. got like a problem pooping, saber like, you're going to take a Here's saber lactis and hopefully things will work out I'm for just you. Looking, I'm just thinking also the synergy of like sinister. Like, how would sinister be more badass with saber tooth? He already regenerates. Like sinister or doesn't need to regenerate because he already kind of. Mister Sinister is pretty powerful. I, like, I thought really, Mister Sinister like, creating a, a Cyclops clone would have been a cool villain. I also had, like, I did like have strife, Kingpin. But with Cyclops. I did have a Kingpin idea, but then John yeah. said Kingpin. But I was going to do Kingpin and King Shark. And Galactus? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, Galactopin. Uh, yeah, Galactopin. Uh, no, it was going to be. Bob is going to call his Galactus. King Shark. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 uh, Galactus, I think it was going to be Galactus in like some sort of weird, you know, character mashup. But uh, all right, I'm just glad Rob didn't call him Pin Pals, so we're we're good to go. So, uh, our, now we're going to go to Andre, who is really taking. Now I just got a real answer. Well, yeah, I just got a real answer. I'm trying to come up with something funny now because I actually uh, no, you, need yeah. a real you don't need to because I'm supposed an to idiot. be kind of serious. So um, oh, you're fine. That's fine. Uh, so I was thinking of what would fit into the book and stuff. And in the comic book, uh, the series, it's um, a world without the Avengers because Steve Rogers never gets thought out as Captain America. Um, so I decided to say, hey, well, what would happen to the Red Skull if there was no Captain America? So I, I don't know if a lot of you guys out there know, but uh, the original Red Skull, Johan Smith, he actually inhabited a cloned body of Steve Rogers. That's why he can go toe to toe with him. Uh, and then he also has his other prowess as a master tactician. And, um, and apparently he does have low level uh, uh, telepathy and can control people and stuff. So I figured that in this world, the Red Skull would still have died, but then Hydra, when they want to uh, recreate him, would need to a different way to bring him back. They obviously can't clone Steve Rogers' body because he's not around. So um, there's a nice villain that I really love since the 90s named Omega Red. So Ooh, Omega Red on my was list. a mutant, on my list. Mm. and uh, he is also, he is a bionic cyborg. So in this realm, I figured that Hydra would raid this uh, Russian super soldier base and steal the car, I think it's called Carbondonium, which is a cheaper form of adamantium, and they would make this body 
uh, with these radioactive uh, tendrils and stuff, and they would put in the mind of the Red Skull, Johann mm. Smith, forming mm. the Omega Skull, mm. right? So cool. I thought that'd be pretty cool, yeah, right? Cool. Fits, and, and then you've got a more frontline Red Skull yep. who's got these and super Omega Red, yeah. 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 So yeah. Omega Red and the Red Skull. That is a that's a fabulous idea. It's good. I found a way to uh, enhance Rob's idea. Uh, so my idea to Rob's to make it to the next level is Sinister and Zemo. So Baron Sinister, and he could take over a Ooh, country, hey. and then all of a sudden, as Sinister does, he'd be able to uh, basically be, has the title of both a Baron, but also because you know he likes to be king and royalty, as we've seen through various comics, and uh, he can do that. Plus. You know, clearly a Baron is superior than a Mister. So uh, that Sinister Zemo, Sinister Zemo, uh, mm-hmm. that would be, you know, that or oh, this, yeah, either way it would be a fun one because, uh, you know, we've seen what happens when Sinister uh, and, uh, takes over an entire city or town and he replaces everyone with himself. <laughs> it is a, a unique and wonderful world. So I think you're uh, underestimating Mister Sinatooth. <laughs> <laughs> And the stories that he could he could be a part of. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, yeah, I I I'd rather him have, and I I would love a world where everything of sinister is him, but the one butler from uh, is is that one guy from uh, a Winter Soldier. Everyone else is sinister, but the one butler, and he's just like kind of living his life, being uh, working for Baron uh, Sinister, and uh, everyone else is sinister, but the one butler. So that would be uh, my take on, and it'd be, comedy would ensue. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I liked your idea too, John. It was uh, goofy and kind of right up your alley. So congratulations on all, right in your wheelhouses. Uh, by far, the most uh, plausible and most useful idea here is Andres. So thank you, congratulations. Hundred yep, uh, <laughs> percent. Yeah. Uh, I love Omega Red. So yeah, yeah, the most creative, the as I asked for, is definitely John. So uh, congratulations, John, as the person who has the most creative. Because out of that angle, because yeah. Andre has the angle of like combining two unmovable forces and making it even stronger. But John's angle of like, he's, he's, you know, uh, King Pan Apocalypse can't beat the X-Men by brute force anymore. So they're going to do through corporate warfare. I'm like, that is you. That's a brand new angle. Push them down. They can't afford yeah. to fuel up the, 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 the Blackbird. What are they going to yeah. do? They, they're going to sit at home? They're, they're, they're gonna drive? Copyright you're going to drive to places? The Blackbird? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. an SR-71 Blackbird. And tell, tell them, they're, tell them <laughs> their team name isn't uh, uh, appropriate. They, I, I, feel <laughs> like, I feel like John's character would buy a lot of Bitcoin cryptocurrency and use that to bankrupt <laughs> and like just basically you know, hire people to just throw dog poo on the lawn of the X mansion every day and just like do random things, acts of, uh, of, of mischief. So um, there we go. That's great. Uh, okay. So thank you all. That was a good one. And uh, as we jump to the next uh, Heroes Reborn. So all of us here remember the original Heroes Reborn series back in 1996, six. It was a tumultuous time for those kids and young folk who don't know what we're talking about. Marvel was in trouble. The whole industry was in trouble. So they're like, what's a good idea? We, no one's buying our comics. We are almost bankrupt. This is the time where they're selling off stuff left, right, and center. That's why Sony got Spider-Man for a mint. Uh, as we know, Marvel tried to sell every character to Sony. And Sony's like, we just want Spider-Man. You can keep the rest of the garbage. It's not worth the $30 million. For <laughs> Nobody rights. knows who Captain America no is. No one so cares we'll just, who Captain yeah. America and the Fantastic Four is. So yeah. Marvel is like, fine, we'll, we'll do it. And then that led to Heroes Reborn, which was them, uh, which, not surprise, rebooting the universe, uh, making things, we're resetting the comics at one, rebuilding this the This was Avengers. like the first reboot, though. Yes, the first they, they brought in uh, Rob Liefeld to like mm-hmm. jazz it up and redo all the characters just like DC later did with Jim Lee to re-image all their, their DC characters. But um, they, they put an emphasis on the Avengers. They put an emphasis on Fantastic Four. Uh, that's what uh, the folks, because that's the only thing they own because they gave away X-Men and, and, and whatnot. So they, they kind of tried their best to relaunch themselves after the Onslaught event. So many people see it as one of the biggest failures, uh, but I would like everyone's thoughts on it now that we are coming up to this big anniversary and now that clearly, just like the Clone Saga, everything years later is now looked on in a different regard. 
but I wanted to get your thoughts, John, on, on, on Heroes Reborn. And I know Andre will give us a big soliloquy because he was knee deep in it. But John, tell us what you remember of, of that back in the year of our Lord uh, in 1996. And that, yeah. Back, so back in 96, um, I was still more, <laughs> more of a, yeah, I was more of an, I was still more of an X-Men guy. So this wasn't really a, uh, my jam, but I did get the, I think it was like a four issue mini series that launched the event. And then four brand new number ones, Fantastic Four, Avengers, Captain America, and, and Thor. Uh, and Iron Thor. Man. Was it was it Thor? I think it was Iron Man. Yeah. Will oh, Spartan. Iron Man. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Pochecchio did Iron Man or whatever. It's got yeah. that iconic cover with all the wires going into a chest. So I, so I had them all. And I think I did stick with fan four, um, maybe the longest, because that was, that was the Jim Lee stuff. Um, but I don't really, re- I, I only remember the Rob Liefeld stuff because it was maybe so sensational. Yeah. Um, he had the Captain America with a giant chest and yep. stuff like that. Um, I wanted to like it. Like I wanted to like Rob Liefeld's work on it. Cause it was like, like I, Captain America was one of the characters that I didn't really know his origin that much. I knew Iron Man's origin, you know, I knew Fantastic Fours and, 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 and most of the Avengers. So I was like, Oh, kind of neat. They're going to re redo Captain America in a modern setting and that kind of stuff. But it just it, it did not work out. There was no backgrounds. <laughs> Every, everybody looked like, like like ridiculous. But um, overall, his design like uh, I'm looking at some of the covers here um, for his and, and and I think he redid the Captain America logo on his head and stuff like that. So it wasn't an A and stuff like that. But uh, I have fond memories of it. But I but none of it really stands out. And I, I definitely would. I don't think I would dig up those issues if I had them, uh, other than to look at the covers and things. If I asked you what the storyline was, could you tell me anything about what happened in that period? Like, can you not like? Do you know anything? If I no, was, I, I know it. I know it spins out of an X Men event, the X Men onslaught, yeah, and, that's right. and and the Avengers showed up to help the X Men combat onslaught, and and it gets them slingshotted out of this timeline, so they're gone or something like that, and the, and there's the whole new universe and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't remember any other specifics. Okay. Other than that's, that's Captain good. America, gonna... and I think Nick Fury goes to recruit him, um, or something. Yeah, it's fine. I'm gonna I go remember. through Andre to come up soon. Yeah. So that's <laughs> it's a good starting point. You you got something. That's great. Uh, Rob, uh, there is a gray zone in your world when you didn't collect comics. Uh, yeah. Was this in that gray patch? As I this forget? was this was Just kind before? of in between because, um, this was probably near the end of it because I didn't really follow much of the onslaught stuff. I mean, 95 is death of Superman. So I was still kind of the death return of Superman. But I remember when this whole, this, I mean, I remember the, this is pre-internet kids. So you were reading it in the back of wizard magazine, uh, and star log and everything else of that. And this was a huge, that you had people who had left, you had Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld. I mean, obviously, um, um, McFarlane and everybody else I went and they created Image Comics but to have Rob Liefeld and, and Jim Lee then return to Marvel the place that they kind of said piss off we're out of here uh, and we're brought back in to reboot this universe was huge and so <clears throat> you're right uh, Stu that this was like uh, uh, the downward spiral of comics there was no more of these the variant covers the uh, metallic covers and the die cast and all that stuff or die cut sorry um, but these sales went through the roof uh for these and i should have brought them out i have them i have do you have all them? i i do i have like three issues of each so i was like oh my god <laughs> i'm gonna get number ones and and i remember yeah. thinking like grabbing fantastic four number one and then looking at it and because i got three copies of each and i was like wow look at this and i was like brett booth he did the cover of that, of that fantastic four number one right so i was like oh that's not even jim lee um i actually though uh, I think that that image that we all kind of remember of the Captain America with the massive chest, that actually isn't in any of the books. That I feel that we've all, it's part of that Mandela effect where we all think it it was part of a promotional artwork. I think it was never actually properly published. Um, So that's never, that's, we've always kind of assumed that we've, we can swear to God, oh, it's in that book, but it's actually in none of those books that, that that shot with that massive uh, chest. I don't know what Liefeld was doing, but it, this did reinvigorate and restart. uh, I mean, obviously it restarted the Marvel universe and it did reinvigorate the sales, but they all, I mean, I think Liefeld left after like six or seven issues. um, And then Lee stayed on for a little bit longer than he was gone as well. So 
I think in the overall scheme, I know Andre will have a lot more to, to delve into about the history of this, but I, I think it, it was, it, it did what it set out to do, which was to create buzz, to create sales. And then I think it just petered off and they went back to uh, the normal, the normal universe. Uh, this was like a pocket universe that was meant to bring people in. And it did that. It was sensational. It was all over the news because this was the first time you really had rebooted the Marvel universe with new number ones. And then it all kind of went away. So, um, so yeah, I have those issues. And I, I, again, I should, I should maybe just go dig them out, but yeah. Um, just crazy. The amount of, the amount of money people spent on these thinking, Oh my God, I got an Avengers number one. I have a fantastic four number one. And I think they're maybe worth pennies. Like they're not, I, I, maybe they go for a buck or two right now. I'm, I'm not even too sure. Uh, Andre, share with us yeah. your thoughts. Well, as, I, I think you guys were, touched on some. Were you, you were still, you were at a, you were working retail at selling yeah. those comics. So yeah. yeah. So a couple things that you guys touched on, but the, 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 um, the biggest thing, the big draw for this was the, the heroes reborn was that the, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld were giving head charge to do the original Marvel superheroes of Iron Man, the Avengers, Captain America, uh, and the Fantastic Four. Uh, and their their mandate was to reinvigorate, renew, and get people into these uh, stories uh, and these comic books. Um, the event, the onslaught event, how they they uh, were able to create this pocket universe was that no like onslaught mutants couldn't beat onslaught so it took the combined energy and effort of all these non-mutant superheroes basically rushing in uh and kind of destroying onslaught from within in which they create this pocket universe and i think it was somehow tied to franklin richards or something in it the was, end yeah. of the story yeah 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 yeah, um, I think he did. yeah but uh it was the onslaught event a was huge in comics and then this was a big big deal um because it was advertised as you're getting jim lee back and at that time jim lee had never done the fantastic four before and he's in charge of the fantastic four and iron man and then you've got rob liefeld doing captain america and the avengers and they brought with them their uh their crew of people as you you basically got uh, extreme studios creators and wildstorm creators doing these books um and it it was it was huge every one of those comics had two covers minimum okay so this was almost i don't want to say it's the start of the variant cover thing but it was it was very very early on and most people were like yeah give me multiples of both those covers as uh, as rob said uh, there was a jim lee cover for for fantastic four number one and a brett booth cover from fantastic four number one um, Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee, I think both respectively did about six issues of their their stories of Captain America and the Fantastic Four, kind of like the first story arcs. But then the other creators or artists uh, had taken on. And I think it was only supposed to be a one year contract anyways. Um, so they those comics sold extremely well. Um, some were definitely better than the others. The, I, I still stand by that Fantastic Four run is fantastic. Jim Lee on the four and reinvigorating them to be, uh, you know, just younger. Uh, I, I don't want to use the word hipper, but it was just a, a gorgeous book. His take modern. on more, especially, yeah, just modern. Just the thing looked sick. Even Brett Booth taking over, perfect, perfect job. Yeah. Like the tech, like them flying into space on their ship. Doctor Doom by Jim Lee. Like, come on, like that is again by far one of my still favorite runs of of um of comics just because of the the, the visuals you know fantastic four has always had great artists um and great writers but it wasn't super popular like in the 80s the fantastic four was super popular this brought everybody was buying fantastic four uh it was outselling like x-men uh um after. yeah like i said i was an x-men guy i didn't collect anything other than x-men and this i did get i did get these yeah yeah so the cool thing about it was though as this series did peter on like it peter off it was de definitely known that it wasn't going to be a, a limited thing and i think they got about 14 issues of each but what yeah, it I've, I've 13 to, issues for each one 13 what it led that. to was heroes return and this was now where they've brought the heroes that back that have been missing from the mcu uh and like this is where you've had spider-man and like the thunderbolts holding their own and then the heroes reprint and they put some of the best creative teams on the heroes return and that 
made Avengers and Iron Man and X Men, uh, not X Men, and and Avengers and Fantastic Four continue to sell. So this was a shot in the arm, um, and and it was it was really cool. Listen, Rob Liefeld tried to steal all the attention he could, and, and he definitely did. And and the Captain America book, unfortunately, was the worst of them, you know, um, and and stuff. But again, the unfortunately, this guy generates. It, buzz and i think it was probably like let's face it that's probably the last really bud buzzworthy thing that he's done everything else that he's tried to attach himself on it's just fizzled people like liefeld if they're longtime fans but he doesn't drive new people to the industry anymore un un unfortunately um and stuff but you know hey he played with the biggest characters and stuff in in, in the industry uh and and whatnot so i i think it was really successful um, period in comics. I remember selling it to a lot of people and a lot of people becoming fans of the characters after like the Iron Man was super cool because they tied Hulk's origin to Iron Man. So you had Hulk and that was cool. You know, maybe even then they were realizing, yeah, maybe Hulk isn't going to be the best seller by himself, but let's tie the two together. So there was some interesting ideas, but, but mostly they still stayed true to the original, um, I guess like the original origins, they just up updated them a bit, and and it and it was and it was cool. There's a, um, <clears throat> I mean, as you said, Andre, I think I think people can probably agree Rob Liefeld is a pretty um, polarizing individual. However, he does have his a uh, uh, podcast out which he calls Rob Observations, which irritates me because I wish I had come up with that name. Um, but he actually <laughs> does like there. a five, like in the, his season one, so it came out last year. But he does about five episodes dedicated to the leading up of uh of being courted by marvel to come back and then the idea all the inner workings I and mean, again this is from his perspective and his recollection of things so you take that with what it is it's one side person side of the story but it is really interesting to kind of get some of that inside baseball at least from his perspective of how things happened what he was hired to do and everything else like that so um you know, if, if people are interested in finding a little bit of history of that, of that period, I would, I would recommend checking out Rob Liefeld's uh, podcast, Rob Observations. Um, it's not video. It's all, it's purely audio, but yeah, he is a very interesting individual. He's, he's got his uh, quirks and his characteristics and you just got I, I, somewhere. I, the, the information is there. You just got to kind of parse out all the other stuff to see what's, what, what probably is closer I to truth. suggest so. Rob that you do what, uh, NBA champion Anderson Verjao did with LeBron James when LeBron James got a tattoo on his back he wrote Chosen One uh, Andrew, Anderson Verjao wrote on permanent marker on his back Chosen One 2 so can you do Rob Reservation 2 and just add uh, a 2 at the end of it and then yeah. that'll be your thing <laughs> Yeah, I did take a look though uh, on on this website um, uh, about the value of that Fantastic Four number one. Mm. <laughs> so if you had a copy that was graded at nine point eight, the which is only, high, <laughs> which is high, near mint, has only been really one sale, and it was for forty three dollars. And so just to understand <laughs> for any, those in Canada to actually, so that's forty three Americans, so we'll call it fifty seven Canadian. It, it costs about forty bucks to get it um, uh, graded, um, but a the fair. <laughs> market value for a raw uh, book is uh two dollars and forty cents there were so many dude. this is yeah, this is all yeah, tied so to supply yeah, and demand funny. folks yeah. there was millions of those printed yeah. right so and also comics when you when we talk about comic values we all know something has to happen in a comic that makes sure it has to be a key it issue so it's got to be a first appearance or a trigger of a of a story that 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 has rippled that are still felt so a lot of comics are are, not, are worth uh, nothing unfortunately, either. nothing, you know. But at least that's probably still its cover price was probably two ninety nine US. Yeah, but no. Right? The reason so, I bring it up though is because it, it just it bolsters my whole opinion that when I bought all these issues, I was like, these things are going to be worth so much money. And obviously, but many was, people were in in my boat. That was the eighties slash nineties where yeah. everyone bought six copies of Superman Dies. And I, that didn't even come that. to my head. I was just buying them because yeah. they were number Meanwhile, one. They're they're like, like, oh, new we're story gonna arcs. 10 million copies of Superman dies or Superman returns and it won't, won't be worth a thing. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. a problem. Uh, yeah. There, there's a, there was at one point we laughed because you talk about that, super, uh, that Iron Man like bust 
Boss Logic did do uh, a version of Sam Wilson in that. Oh, the role. Captain America, the Captain yeah, America Boss one. Logic yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, did, uh, the Sam would had Anthony Mackie wearing the Captain yeah. America suit with the giant chest looking out, like he did his own version of that. It's it's so, a, it's a it's it's, it's a it's meme forever in the culture. So yeah, and then they, Rob Liefeld blocked him. He blocked. He? <laughs> Bo- yes, he blocked Boss Logic. I guess he was pissed about it, and he yeah. yeah so he did. I think Boss Logic also did. Um, uh, Chris Evans one where uh, Chris Evans yeah. Captain America where he's wearing the thing too. So yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, it's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, well, uh, observations are are uh, maybe he's very sensitive. So that's that's the thing. <laughs> so yeah, but like Andre, listen, I, and I, and I agree. Like on, he, maybe he hasn't moved the needle on many things. I don't know what the. I know he does a lot of variant covers for Marvel. Or he he's currently on a it. Snake Eyes project. Yeah, he is, and, and I think nobody he re- cares about. Unfortunately, hey, if, but if you dig it, you dig it. <laughs> we, we um, but you know what? The, the guys made tons of money. Like this is the thing. Yeah. He he hustled. He made tons of money especially back in the in the 90s when it was all about licensing properties he was making he made some serious banks so he did what he did he was money properly because uh unlike our our canadian canada's own uh you know todd mcfarland who invested in toys and produced all those you know i don't know how baseball cards (laughs) he started up that baseball card company that went <laughs> oh, did Rob or, or Todd McFarland? Uh, Todd did. Todd yeah, invested. Also, he created that baseball card. He also company. bought a bunch of baseballs that are worth nothing. Yes, but yes. he still has Spawn toys and Spawn to carry him through. So yes. uh, you know, he's he's not he's not billionaire rich, but he's he's got a couple. Yeah, but couple I think millions. I think it's a different level. I think I think you know it's hard to compare the two because because Todd McFarland's still producing, right? Like yes. like I don't know if, I don't know who's richer, but but Todd McFarland owns a very Todd successful to- toy company. <laughs> Yep. Spawn is still going on, yep. right? Mm-hmm. So yep. again, it, it, maybe it's an unfair comparison, but I would, I you know, well, I think that's because talking fan Spawn, base. Right? I think McFarland's got a bigger fan base across all those things. And, not and, that, I, not I that think, it matters, but but I th- yeah, at least he's still doing what he loves. But I think I think Andre, you've already nailed it on the head. He's like, yes, he he has the toys. He owns Spawn. He's still making Spawn stuff, and he has a bigger followership because people still care about him. It's just that alone is like, even if it means just a teeny bit more money. Sure, but yeah. every Deadpool comic, movie, merchandise, he, Liefeld gets, gets a cut out of it. Does he yes, still get a cut? Be, because that was the contracts that he had signed back then. Yeah, so he, so yeah, he is, yeah, he's still creating stuff. I, I know that there's a big thing. What, what's his, what's his book? What's what was his main book? Young, young something, whatever. Young blood. blood that he's young blood that he's trying to get made into a movie or TV. No, movie. it's um yeah. profit. Profit's the one that Mark Guggenheim, profit. who is I, currently... I think young blood was also on the table. So if those, but yeah, if those but... happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At any rate, I mean, now we're di- diving into a Rob Liefeld stuff, but I mean, yes, we'll, he's, we'll, we'll get into that once yeah. some, it gets an option, but uh, it may or may not happen. I think to your point, he is like the character, uh, Hugh Grant's character in about a boy, like he's just living off the fact that he has re- the digitals and like from like a Christmas song that uh, his father right. made. It's like, he's like, ah, yeah. I got Deadpool money. I don't have to do anything else. <laughs> so maybe he doesn't have to hustle as hard as, uh, as someone else. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, like to, uh, to your thing, Andre, the influence is probably what these guys are used to being able to get walk into a room and do whatever you want. And that is probably the biggest heart- pill to swallow when you no longer have the clout to get stuff done anymore. Because when you say, I want this done, usually people are like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And now he's at a point where, yes, you're right. You, you talked about, he hasn't had a real hit in a long time. And you can only go talking about how good Deadpool is because, but that was something that you made 20 plus years ago. And so it's it funny is. because the Deadpool he created isn't even the Deadpool that's that, that's around. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like his Deadpool, is like costume alone, that's like, that's it. Just the colors of the costume. Yep. And the fact that he has guns and swords is the only thing. Other than that, and he just copied you that could for not put. Yeah, you <laughs> could, like is you know it's not the same. I guess you could say the same thing about you know like Superman or Batman, but those characters were created so much longer ago that they've had to evolve. Whereas Deadpool was created in like the the late nineties or yep. or no not no, late nineties the late early nineties early nineties. And it's so different from what the creator made. Listen, I'm not knocking it. I'm yeah. just just kind of stating facts, and we're talking. So, hey man, yeah. we're, as we we're talking about, here's reborn. You can read the Squadron Supreme, and basically they are a copy of the Justice League. So yep. you know this is, you know, and and we've seen it in multiple comics where it was, even in Thor, where or what was the comic they 
what we were talking about where they had the no what was it? it was a marvel comic where it had the the, the heroes the, all the lights coming together and they were all wiped out in uh, some sort of purge uh so there's been lots of like comics that use likenesses or like whatnot and then just say you know they, they got their butts handed to them so it is what it is uh there, there's no original ideas anymore. So that's all I got to say. I need to copy someone else because there's nothing left. Every story has been written. It's just now it's just it's a, a, a quick variant or a reboot. So uh, <laughs> I would look if there, a, if a Young Blood project gets announced, I, I, I would follow. What is he, okay, tell me <laughs> what Young Blood is. What is his powers? What does he do? Like, no, it's you know, a group. Group. rip off of the Avengers. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was a knockoff of Avengers, but but I remember following it when I was a kid just because I don't know if it was the did. art style. Yeah. Or, or just that's the fact that, that that's they were already a problem for me. I thought edgier. it was a person. I didn't even realize it was a no, team. team. Oh, you remember it, Stu. It was the guy who looked like Hawkeye who led the team. His name was Shaft. Then yeah. there was the big guy named Bad Rock, the Iron Man guy who was named Die Hard. Die Hard. Yeah. And, the, and, and uh, who had I think Chapel was on that team. Yeah. I, I honestly probably, when I was at the rack, looked past him like, this looked like trash. And I carried on to the other stuff. Like, it was like I a domino know. looking listen, character. Honestly, when, like, we were, still... when we were kids buying those, like, like, listen, everybody who collected comics in the 90s had to have bought image stuff because you just bought every number one. And Youngblood and Spawn. And Wildcats and um, Cyberforce; those Wild were Cats, all the first, as my the one. first ones, yeah. and you bought them. You you know, like yeah. so. It the sad. No, I don't want to say sad, but the sad thing was I continued to buy. Oh, here's a Die Hard limited series, and now here's uh, Battlestone. We, we bought and, into. And we had Brigade, them all. So, and, so if, and like if, then so you if it gets all of the, the, the I'm, I'm no, gonna I, look. I was not on that. I I fell into the. Grifter I think Stu would have been a little bit younger. I know. I, yeah, I, I fell just into it. the. Oh, Grifter looks cool. So I went to Wildcats. Like I went yeah. that direction. Plus they had a cartoon show. So I'm like, yeah. oh no, this this one has a TV show. So I I yeah. went Wildcats as if I was gonna go Image and I only pick one team because I was still buying Fantastic Four. I think from you guys as my pull list. At Fantastic Four, I had a couple things where I'm like, oh no, I have Wildcats. I didn't, I didn't care about Young Blood. Although I saw the thing, I'm like, these guys look not so interesting. So it like never came out. So if if it came out on a regular schedule, I think more people would have been into it. Maybe. I also, also, <laughs> I think I fell into Authority. It's just funny. I think Andre was like, you got to read Authority. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll read Authority over yeah. Young Blood. So I think that was also the. Uh, Andre guiding me to one way or the other because I'm sure I would have went, but I think you also had that whole like screw these guys and never come out on time comics. So yeah. that's probably why <laughs> I, you didn't tell me to buy Young Blood because you'd be like, well, these things never come out on time. So uh, yeah. that, that Pro- Profit did enjoy a kind of a nice relaunch from Image. So if they're going to go with Profit, who's basically Space Conan, um, that'd be interesting. <laughs> so you know, I think we'll they see. Let's we'll see. Space Conan. I think Marvel can just do Space Conan as is. Uh, they don't have. They to tried. They they did a they had a book called Conan twenty ninety nine. <laughs> oh, that's not. Th- we we can do a whole another day on twenty ninety nine. But uh, you know, I, I'd rather Conan be put in the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's probably the better way to do it at this standpoint. You just can't have Conan by himself. And him and Drax would just always be. No, you would replace him out Drax. Drax out and put Conan in, and because you only have one of those guys, you can't have two. <laughs> Of the same character, so he would Drax would be off doing another mission. They throw in Conan, and then as it's now Conan as the Drax character <laughs> doing a bunch of stuff. So that would be the right pitch. Um, okay, so cool. As we as we finish things up, we talk about the news that Rob shared with us on our chat. Uh, Deadline is reporting that our our boy Henry Cavill, The Witcher, is advanced talks to do the Highlander movie, which unclear whether a reboot or a new thing or whatever unsure whether it's he's part of the clan mcleod or not but it would be highlander as we discussed there can be only one uh, there's no real ever been an explanation as to what the source is that's canon so if i wanted to tell you what it means i don't know but all i can tell you is that there are a bunch of immortals that live on the planet that have rules that basically they're every time they run in each other there's the quickening and there's like they know that the other person's immortal. They bring out their swords, which somehow bend the laws of physics. That the quickening happens coats. after they get the kill. Yeah. So like, their, their <laughs> swords hide in their trench coats or whatever. No one knows how it works. I think they're like lightsabers. They bring them out. They fight. <laughs> you chop off the guy's head. And then the quickening yes. happens where you get the powers or the strength. Yeah, their soul. Essentially, their all, essence. All the souls that that guy has killed goes to you as well. And I yeah. think the ultimate gift, if, if you kill all the other immortals, is that you become mortal, which doesn't make sense. Yes. 
as to why that works. And I think they also describe, they also explain that you can also become immortal if you get killed and you come back. So it's a never ending <laughs> supply. So it's not like 100 immortals, like 100 bullets. There's not like just 100 immortals. There's an everlasting amount of immortals and you got to fight them. And uh, the only thing that you cannot do or it's looked bad upon is kill on holy ground, which right. happens all the time, but you're not supposed to. Uh, and then on top of that, there are watchers that watch them, that write things, their stories and tales down. And uh, this is a cool Watu. <laughs> yeah, it's Watu. Right. Uh, there's a guy that plays sad blues guitars that can't walk anymore, but that's the TV show. Anyways, this is Highlander. <laughs> um, this is what it's about. Uh, John, Rob and I both watched Highlander a little while ago. I think we watched it both in the last six months. As I mentioned it, he immediately put it on his uh, Amazon account and started watching it. What is your thoughts on Henry Cavill somehow being Scottish or maybe being part of the Clan McLeod again, or maybe being something else? What, what are your thoughts on, on this Highlander reboot? Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, we, we and Rob did a rewatch of Highlander for our eighties movie uh, showdown. And unfortunately that movie really does not stand up well. Um, the choreography <laughs> is absolutely horrible, especially the sword play. Um, very, very laughable at this stage. Like it, it's such a cool concept too. So yeah. it's, it's almost like we willed this to happen. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm down, especially Henry Cavill. Like I did, I didn't watch all of Witcher, but I did watch that first sword fight scene, which is phenomenal. So if, and, and I think this is the, the director of John Wick is also associated yeah. with this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if they do basically do what John Wick did for MMA combining with guns and they do it now with sword play, um, I'm all in. That's great. I don't, I don't know if sword play has become, um, that stylized in Hollywood movies over here, Crouching Tiger and a lot of Asian cinema have done a lot of great things with swordplay, but I don't know if it's quite come over here to that extent. Like I remember watching that, what was that Arthur, King Arthur movie? I don't remember anything spectacular, the Guy Ritchie one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you the, said the, like I'm, two I'm, weeks ago that you loved that movie. I, I like that movie, but I don't remember anything spectacular about the swordplay. No, play. the swordplay wasn't that. So, right? no, so, I, like, so I think you have to also mention that Yes, the swordplay wasn't great, but remember, let's not forget that villains back in the 80s just had to sound bad and didn't have to look it <laughs> like in Commando. Like, let's get a fat guy and throw some chain mail on him and we're good enough. He can fight swords. Yeah, yeah. So, that's, like, this that's is, the this breaking is... point of that Commando movie. It's it's not, like, does not help of... elevate it above Die Hard. Um, but, but yeah, the, the, the sword, if they can bring that level of swordplay with Henry Cavill and Henry Cavill is going to fully commit to this. You already saw, I think on Instagram, he posted a bunch of uh, yes, things about kilts and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But he already knows how to handle a sword. We've seen it in Witcher. Um, so if they get other people, especially this guy who's directed John Wick is going to call all his uh, stunt choreography and action choreography friends. And they are probably just going to level up the entire genre of, uh, medieval weaponry but um but, but in, in Highlander, movies <laughs> yeah but john i think the problem already you you already mentioned that in john wick films you're fighting a dozen mm -hmm. two dozen people at once Highlander is mm -hmm. a one-on-one -on -one v one situation you don't get the fact mm -hmm. that like highlander he doesn't fight like 12 people at once he fights one person in a duel of the yeah face. and you can sell and it well, yeah, but it doesn't have calls. to be though you're you're why why am i they, could, they could have people working for them yeah they could have henchmen. <laughs> That's right. With smaller swords. And then you fight the big boss, which is, you know, a John Wick staple um, with the bigger sword. <laughs> it's just, it's just, yeah, I, I guess it's a cheating mechanic kind of gets like, you know, I, I rather yeah. like it's. No, it's the, the, cool the real question watch... is, are they going to, are they going to dust off the queen tracks? Of course, they're going to go with something but, modern. <laughs> but no, no, Queen. That, no, that's not irreplaceable. It, it's it's <laughs> the biggest atrocity of Mortal Kombat is they did not bring back that original Mortal Kombat song. It was uh, the, that that original song should have been in that movie, and it would at least fix some of it. But this is the thing about movies when you have uh, uh, <laughs> Andre like, and, and Andre can agree with you too. Like you, you make the villain less of a villain when he needs all the lackeys basically if you're saying he, the way he beats all the other mortals is he has 13 dudes weaken him and then he comes in and just chops off the head like that the villain is not a villain anymore the best villains are the ones that like do it on their own take them out and they're really dangerous when the hero is like oh i all I have to do is go through the minions or the second hand man and then the boss battle is is useless because it's like well that that guy's not really a guy that wins he just relies on henchmen to like kill people for him so I just don't see the menacingness like 
Rob, to your point, in the original Highlander, Kruger, like that, that like the barbarian, like was menacing. Playing C. Brown. Like, yeah. because of not only his voice, but like he single handedly was killing people on his own. Right. When you bring in like six other barbarian minions to do it, you're like, well, that's not really that interesting anymore. So <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think you're, listen, I'm excited yeah. for this. As John said, Henry Cavill, that this, the article that was uh, um, broke through deadline was yeah. like, he's in talks. Henry Cavill then re post that yeah. article and is pretty much like yeah i'm excited to get into this so we don't know in what capacity in what um part he will play that being said the concept in and of itself we've always said this it, it's it's really cool like i'm surprised yeah. that we haven't had a reboot of this movie universe because i think it does the idea lends itself to a whole new set of uh, of of movies and even potentially shows but you have to build upon that world. And so you're you're right in that, you know, you can only have, <laughs> there can be only one. You can only have, if you're having a one-on-one sword <laughs> fight play, maybe they update it. Maybe we don't, maybe it's not swords. I mean, they use swords way back in the days and maybe it's something different now. Like who knows what they're going to do. I think that they will modernize it. I think you're going to have, obviously you have to have the history of why he's called a Highlander. It's it's obviously because he was from the, the Scottish Highlands. That's why he was called Highlander. It wasn't like some cool code name. Um, Just like the Spaniard, the cool code name. That's right. Yeah, who <laughs> him himself was Scottish. It was ridiculous. <laughs> they had a French guy playing a Scotsman, a Scotsman playing a Spaniard um, um, with a Scottish accent. But uh, I, I'm listen, I'm excited for this. I, I've always kind of really enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed this series. Yes, it doesn't hold up uh, whatsoever. It, you know, there's a lot of, there's a very finite amount of movies from the 80s uh, that actually you can watch now and still kind of enjoy it. It's somewhat timeless. That is not one of them. Uh, I think we're just, we're very accustomed now to the new age special effects and things. So, so let me I'm ask- excited for it. Let me ask you a question, Andre, because you're, I don't know how much of a, a, a horse you have in this race. As, as everyone knows, I was a big fan of watching the Highlander TV show filmed in both France and in Vancouver. But I liked the, the, the world building they did in that, that show, and I, I really liked it a lot. And then I watched the movies. Do you think that this show needs to be – is it better off as a TV show or a movie, like in your opinion? That's that's a tough one because the quality of of movies of of television right now I think is eclipsing movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. And I think you can do more uh, in that, and and you can build you can build more on it. Mm-hmm. I I think I think if they were to do a TV series, whether it be a Netflix or an HBO or yeah. or whoever has the rights, you know, Amazon, and they're going to spend the money and say, hey, here's eight. Mm-hmm. one hour and 10 minute episodes or whatever and then now we're going to really see highlanders through time and see and, and 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 flesh out that world i think it could i think it could be fantastic i think if they were just going to do a movie though i would really question why you would need to bring back highlander meaning that you got the guy from john wick john wick's an original ip right you get you could cast Henry Cavill. You could put a sword in this guy's hand. You could put a battle axe in this guy's hand. You could put a gun. You could put a morning star. You put any. Make up a new concept. It's gonna sell. Mm-hmm. The amount of people now who know Highlander, you know, you could ask somebody who's twenty something. They I don't know nothing about Highlander, right? And it's not like it was a franchise that people speak so highly of. You know what I mean? No, no. But you know what I mean? Like we do. We know it. It's yeah. in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Yeah. But of of all the the properties you could you could pick up you know and again unless unless they already have it and don't have to pay for that license what i'm saying is it's not such an original concept that somebody could say oh you're copying highlander you're like Mm -hmm. prove it dude just because i got a guy with a sword okay he's not in a kilt he's in something else what you know what i mean so I, i i guess my to your questions too i would say definitely a a show but the show's gotta have that budget maybe not quite um game of thrones budget but really close and then you can build that franchise like i don't know if you guys watched all the witcher like well i know yeah i did i did Uh, yeah yeah, that to me i can't wait for season two because for sure they 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 rolled the dice on season one they spent some money Hmm. but then with the success they're like okay blank check now because we know how 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 it was perceived my only fear is i think 
I don't want Henry Cavill to become not only type typecast, but also to do too like to to um you know stretch himself thin because you can get injured doing these things. And I I to be honest with you, I would rather see him as as Geralt of Rivia, and we get three, four, five seasons of The Witcher or a Witcher movie, then see him do Geralt, and then and then he does the witch, he does the Highlander, but it's just Geralt, and then he does another movie, and it's just whatever. So he then just says, "Screw it! Since I'm practicing with swords and I'm buff, let me make five movies that are all the same, mm, right?" Crazy, so yeah. hopefully he's he's got a better um, mentality of it. But I can't knock him if he enjoyed watching those as a youngster like us, and he's got the chance to play it. You know, like uh, wh- why not? Yeah, it, it all depends yeah. on whether they do. If he becomes the movie. sword guy, which I'm down with, actually. No, no, but, but <laughs> I think Andre's right. Like, if, if you're gonna like the Rock's plan was always in the originally, and and um, his his ex wife, who was the manager as well, was always like, we need to do with a comedy, we need to do like a gun movie, we need like to diversify his portfolio because like you just can't be the Rock in every single thing. And now he's doing more Rock movies, but again, he's been something different each time or trying to be something different each time and i think your your point is very right andre i would rather him you know like hopefully be another superman like that's again if they do it if not i i just don't know if that's in the cards but again my dream of dreams is him being hercules and just like moving the moving around with amadeus cho doing awesome stuff on a, on a Marvel you know, movie. To, like, to that be would be, with you, like, great. Because I think that's, that's him being buff and him, like, the hairy chest and everything just being hilarious, having fun in a Marvel thing without having to be too, 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 like, proper with a Superman. Like, him having fun as Hercules because the Marvel Hercules is my one of my favorite characters. Like, he's just so much fun. And him yeah, being I think, Thor is always I think fun. DC, I think if they really, if they don't give him another chance in Superman, they really drop the ball. And I hope, and honestly, then, then, Marvel should just snatch him up and yeah, do something, and then and then all of a sudden they'll be, the, the, you know, the guys at Warner or wherever Warner ends up being, they'll be like, we, how stupid are we? Like you got this guy who's a charming, versatile actor, you know, he's he's proven that he yeah. can do many things. He he should have been, you know, more than like, well, not that Affleck's around anymore, but you you build a universe around yeah. him yeah. and the chemistry that you get with Gal Gadot and 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 stuff like that, and. And 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 they and they're gonna let him go after you know without get giving him an actual Man of Steel two or 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 an actual Clark Kent and Superman movie. So you know I don't I don't even want I don't even need to see it with Zack Snyder. If you want somebody else to direct him because because there's all this talk of what's going on with Zack and and, and Warner Brothers, but yeah. he you can't fault his dedication and 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 his portrayal of superman and, and stuff and i don't know who i'd want to see him in marvel but if, the, if if it comes out that he's no longer in to do a superman movie marvel will just be like yeah just come on over here we'll treat you right and then and that would be a huge like like just slap and 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 uh and rightfully so He's had a very interesting career, like Henry Cavill, um, you know, obviously the man from Uncle. A lot of people really liked him in that movie. It's kind of a sleeper hit movie. That. Count me in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, obviously we talk about he did The Witcher. He did the Enola Holmes movie, right? Like Millie Bobby Brown's. Uh, he was Sherlock Holmes. He was like third fiddle to her in her Netflix movie. He's making another one of those. Know, yep. He's kind of like all over the place. He was great and, in the Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Mission Impossible Fallout. He played the villain and so there's Spoiler like alerts. it, it well, he played the villain uh you didn't, know the the villain. You didn't know he's the villain he's just a guy well, well that movie they, they, gave, they gave it away they gave it away early. um yeah. Yeah. so there's there's i i almost i i get worried because I, he is so likable he's so nice like nobody's ever said a shitty thing about him now everybody really wants him to be reprise his role as superman and as we don't know there's a um it looks like they're going in a whole different direction i don't know if they're you know with what's happening with uh the jj a or well, we know what stuff. they're going but we know what but, they're doing but yeah. right but you know I, there is a little bit of hope and maybe it's stupidity on my part but that you know you've got the rock currently filming shazam and he has made some comments about you know the only guy that could go up against superman and as you said, his ex-wife is Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia uh, group of companies represents Henry Cavill. That's his manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully there's a way that if The Rock has enough clout that he can, you know, kind of convince WB to bring Cavill back in in some capacity. What if, what if, what if we see even just Cavill like a cameo in, in Black Adam? Yeah. 
Yeah, that I was, mean, like, like even yeah. just to, just the them lining up for this yeah, I, at I, the I, end of the air, yeah, and then I, and then that's yeah. it. Like, not to, again. Yeah. I want him to get his full chance, but you yes. know, m- maybe I, if I if it's the, not if he doesn't get to play it in his own movie. I don't know if I, I would I be. Want him, I, I I would take I a him. Black Adam Superman movie with the Rock and him as the second Black I, Adam movie. I think it's going to be the other, the new Superman, the JJ Superman, and then that's it. No, 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 because no, that they, that, that script's not world. done. No, yeah. they haven't said that. That script's not done until December. They're filming Black Adam now. The filming is only gonna is gonna wrap up by the end of the summer or, or early fall. There's no way they won't even have an actor attached mm-hmm. to that to that JJ. Uh, is it uh, Tanahashi Coates, right? Is that how you yeah, pronounce his yeah. name? So Tanisi or yeah, Tani- yeah. So at any rate, I, yeah, I, I just I think the fans would really really want it, but who knows? I don't know. I just I really like the guy. He's the movement he's, is Henry Cavill Hercules. Let's get it rolling. That's my dream. nobody That's wants my that. Hope. He is as Andre said. He's charming enough to do it. Hercules is a very verbose. <laughs> he's a character. terrible character. He's the best. Yeah, he's the best. Who else no. are you gonna get him to play in the Marvel universe? There's We've tons of people. Times. Give him no Wonder one. Man. <laughs> Put him Wonder Man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wonder Man may be the option too, but I, I you know, I think there's there are options. Uh, Maybe that's a question for now. We'll we'll, we'll think on it, it for a couple weeks. Who would we want? Fan Henry Cavill. Several Henry Cavill. times. I as gave the, you guys this option. Like I think like as months the, ago, in, and in no one could come up with a better option because so. Mr. Sinister, Cavill Tooth. <laughs> uh, um uh, quickly as uh, i jump to john and and rob tv show or movie rob or john what would you want tv show or movie for highlander one or the other what's your choice i think henry cavill's got things to do like andre said so i'm i'm fine with a movie and then he he goes and does other things rob uh highlander i, I um uh movie but I, I i do see the a nice hbo max television show it would probably be pretty cool yeah just for those who haven't watched it all of them are on youtube you can watch them uh the, my favorite part of that TV show is just because he, they keep on – it's period pieces. They go back in time all the time. You run into other characters like Roger Daltrey, who uh, is a lead singer of a band. He's fantastic like, in the of show. Of a band. He's one of the greatest rock bands of all time. You're like, this is a lead singer of a band. It's like we're talking about Third Eye Blind again. Give me a break. He's it's a the lead. who. Do, 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 it, yeah, yeah. Do, do, do. He, you might have seen him. You might have heard his music on any of the CSI TV shows. Uh, he <laughs> – On all of the CSI TV <laughs> shows. He's incredible as like – and that's the one thing about a Highlander show, which is so great. It's kind of what the DC show does to the, the, the uh, DC legend is that it's a period piece show. They just go back in time all the time and they just do things and having fun fights and whatnot um, in the backdrop of Vancouver. So that is what the the, the, the joys of having a, a show that's a period piece. So again, my dream, have that back, have a TV show, period piece. Let's go back, see how it works. And uh, I think you're the only one that watched the TV show. Dude, I, I could go all day about Mythos. Don't. Uh, that, that, he's actually <laughs> the best too. He that actor now is a cardiologist, I think. He's a doctor. He gave him acting to be a physician. So like he was like, I just I'll just I did this acting thing for a while. I guess I'll be a doctor. And now he's a full out physician. So I'm like, that dude, multi talented. He's great. Um, okay, so as we're fin- finishing up, Andre, uh, we'll leave you time to do I have spoken. What do you recommend for the people at home to check out or watch? All right. So uh my I have spoken uh is a, a product line that we've been carrying um, since its inception at the store, but the la- latest uh, wave has got me super excited. And I know John's loved these and, and he's been responsible for procuring them for the shop. And it's uh, McFarland's DC multiverse figures, man. These action figures are fan freaking tastic. They're seven inch figures. So a little bit bigger than your Marvel uh, legends and your six inch star Wars black series and stuff but you get the detail and the representation of what the figure or the the character looks like in these figures. So the latest wave that we got in at the store is now available. There is an amazing John Stewart Green Lantern based off of the Jim Lee art, which is fantastic. Uh, There's a Bizarro, Bizarro Superman, which I just absolutely love. I think that might be my favorite one. Gorilla Grodd in like awesome looking golden armor uh and there's a flash uh and then there is the uh nightwing who laughs is it john from the um from the batman who laughs and it's just a creepy like dick grayson but he's been jokerized in the black and and red costume amazing amazing uh figures every wave is creative and they do look like they popped off the comic book page 
the next best thing about these figures is if you're getting the standard figure, they always come with their little, uh, you know, accessories and stuff. But the standard figure is $26.99 Canadian. And that, again, I can't, I can't believe how much bang for your buck. And then when they do a build a figure, it's not much more, maybe another five or six bucks more. And then you can buy the four figures and it builds something else. But these figures are fantastic. If you are a comic lover and you love DC, you're going to see characters from all of them. Like they did a lot from the DC Dark Knight's Metal Wave. And they also did the Batman Last Night on Earth Wave. So these are are almost mini statues that are so well painted that if you just wanted to open them up and display them, they're amazing. So my eye have spoken. I know we talked about Todd McFarlane, so I thought it was apropos we talk about his DC multiverse line of figures, and you can get them all at Heroes World. Uh, we have so many of them, and we like to keep them in stock because they're just that damn good. Awesome. Yeah, uh, awesome. John, where can we find you on the interwebs? And yeah, yeah. so so here, Heroes World. World Online, trying to trying to get a lot of content posted on the uh, Instagram. So if you're following us on the Instagram, Heroes World Online, uh, trying to update the stories, tag all the products, all those action figures that Andre spoke of, they are available on the website. You can order ship directly to your house, or you can order for in store pickup. Um, and we are getting the new wave, so there's the next wave coming out as well too. So the new Batman Beyond figure, as well as the whole. Um, Dark death metal i think the final all father run which has like the rocker superman with the long hair and and wonder woman with the chainsaw and all that kind of stuff that'll all be up there um so and if you're on the youtube please subscribe uh turn on the notifications so you can let so you can find out when we drop the new podcast and the sidekick show and trailer reactions and uh, we're doing doing some unboxings and other fun stuff um and then if you're listening on audio heroes world podcast on Apple uh, iTunes and Spotify. Give us a subscribe. Uh, give us a rating on iTunes. It really helps us out a lot. Awesome. Andre? Yeah, and we are still uh, at our brick and mortar location, which is uh, conveniently located at Highway 7 in Warden. We are available for curbside uh, pickup, uh, so you can reach out through, us through social media or call the store uh, and uh, place an order, and you can pretty much pick up stuff uh, most times the same day as long as we have it in stock. Um, and I think according to um, news and stuff, I think we will be back open in, in June. So we're going to be posting up uh, how we do that uh, with uh, proper safety measures and, and, and limitations and stuff. But man, I'm so looking forward to seeing people uh, in the store and, and doing this shop talk uh, with everybody there. So hopefully, thank you for everybody who supported us so far. Hopefully you're looking forward to coming and checking us in the shop. Awesome. Uh, Rob, what's in store for us on the Sidekick show coming up? More? Yeah, Keanu? so uh, tomorrow, I mean, we're it's uh, it's the May 2 for a weekend. So uh, we have, yeah, in Canada. So on, uh, in our US friends, I think you get next week off. But um, we are live tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Uh, we are doing the month of May has been the Ken Reeves um, rewatch. So we are on John Wick number two. So if you get an opportunity, I believe it's on Crave. It might be on Netflix. Um, it's on, it's on Netflix Prime too. Well. Yeah. On Netflix. Yeah. Okay, yeah, on way. in Canada. So definitely go check it out. And then join John and I as we talk about it. Uh, uh, you know, we we, we kind of go mental talking about the stuff. Because, uh, people join the chat on on youtube and and it gets uh, bananas there as well so it's a lot of fun so you can join us there and you can look for me on youtube as well at uh, the 905 just doing a lot of reviews and and discussions and new episodes on tuesdays and thursdays as well yes yeah, so thank you all for joining us on this journey uh be safe out there support your local stores in any way you can we appreciate the support the likes the sharing all the things you're doing so thank you so much again for everything you're doing and uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everybody. Nanu, nanu. Take care. See you.